So question 3.44 here uh, says use mesh analysis to obtain I0 in the circuit figure. And remember this is the seventh edition, so if you're doing the sixth, uh, then don't watch this one. <laughs> okay. All right. But you could, well, you're welcome to watch it and learn the concept through it. Okay. So we're gonna do these uh, mesh analysis. Uh, it is important to know that when Within a mesh analysis, when when two meshes shares a same uh, current source, then you should combine those and and uh, make a super mesh, right? And then I2 is just by itself. Okay, so I hopefully by this point uh, you're able to set up the uh, mesh analysis equations on yourself. So we start with I2 because it's by itself, individual ones, right? There's only one right here. So we start from top left corner. So 6 dB minus, up, oh, sorry, plus 4 ohms, 4 I2 minus 4 I3 uh, plus 1 I2 minus 1 I1 and then plus 2 I2. Right, whole thing give us zero. When we're applying, this is we're doing the Kristoff voltage law, right? Because ohms times current, that's give us voltage, right? Okay, and uh, how do we determine this is positive and this is negative? It depends on which mesh we're looking at. We're looking at I2, therefore I2 should be positive and everything else should be negative. If you set up everything into clockwise rotation and they are all uniform, right? Because if one is going clockwise and the other one is going clockwise, this is going from top to bottom. And at this point, right, it's going top to bottom. This is going bottom to top. They uh, cancel each other out, or like one is the in the opposite direction of the others, right? So you should use minus sign. Okay, and then this is I super. Oh, sorry, let's simplify this real quick, actually. Uh, so we have negative one I one. Uh, 1, 2, so 7 plus 7 I2 minus 4 I3 and negative 90 volts. Okay. All right. Look at the super mesh system starting from top right corner. So 80, 180 volts uh, going to not B and then we're going to 5 times I1 plus 1 plus I1 minus... 1 times I2 uh, plus 4 times I3 and then minus 4 times I2. Okay, and this whole thing gives us 0. Alright, simplify negative 180 volts and I1 has 1 and 2, so it would be 6. I1 minus 5 I2, yeah, 1 and 2, and then I3, there's only 1, so plus 4 I3. Okay, and these are the two equations uh, that we have right here. Okay, and uh, so we have I1, I2, and I3, and we're trying to find I0. So there's four unknowns. Therefore, we should have four independent equations, right, to be able to solve all of the unknowns. So the next thing is we have to, is so here for mesh analysis, we always have to apply Kristoff current uh, voltage law, but now we have to use some Kristoff current law uh, to analyze this, those knots, right? So here a knot at zero, we can draw a conclusion. Uh, um, not, not, oh, right. We can draw a conclusion from that one, which you know this is clockwise. Right, so over here at this one, at this point, it's entering, right? It's entering. And it's clockwise at this point, this is leaving, right? And at this point, this is leaving. So the current leaving equals the current entering. So I naught and I2 is leaving. I2 plus I naught equals the ones that's entering, which is I1, right? Or you can say as I1 minus I2 to give us I naught, right? Okay. And then we look at the next knot, which is Kristoff current law at knot B, right? I just, it's random letters, I just assigned it. Okay, and then over there, uh, you see I3 is, you know, entering as I draw over here, so it's entering. So I3 and then equals 45 is leaving, right? And then this is I1, I1 clockwise, this is 
at the knot is leaving as well, so plus I1. Right, so I have a relationship of I3 represented in I1, and then I1 minus I2 equals I0. Okay, that's perfect because if we have I3 representing a number, we can just plug in I3 uh, into this equation over here and this equation over here, right? And in that case, since I3 can be represented as I1, then both of these equations will not have I3 anymore, right? They will only have I1s and I2s, which two equations and two unknowns will guarantee you're able to find both of these, right? Unless you make them make uh, arithmetic mistakes, and as long as the equations are independent, which they are. Okay, so for the first one, it's negative 1i1 plus 7i2 minus 4. 4 times I3. I3 is 45 plus I1. So 4, negative 4 times... 4 times 45, 180, and minus I1, right? This whole thing gives us negative 100, uh, ne negative 90 V, simplify. Uh, so negative 5 I1 plus 7 I2, and this whole thing gives you 90 V, right? Plus 180 V both sides. All right, so let's just uh, write this here. I2 for clarifications, and then the next one we're going to use, it's this one, so 6i1 minus 5i2 plus 4 times 45, which is 180, uh, plus 4i1s, right? This whole thing gives you negative 180 volts. Uh, simplify, remember this is the i super, and uh, in that case, 6i, so 10i1, and then what? And then minus 5i2. Uh, this goal thing give us one negative 180 volts. Sorry, uh, negative 300, negative 360 volts. Right, fantastic. Uh, now we can use Gauss elimination, uh, or you can just plug into your calculator or do the determinant uh, using matrices and whatnot. But I'm going to use the Gauss elimination method in this in this one. Right, so I'm going to times this equation by two. Right. Excuse me. This whole equation by 2, which is negative 10i plus 17i2 equals 180 volts. And it, it's not, it does not violate the mathematic, uh, any mathematical rules, right? We times the number of equation on both sides of the equation, then it's still uh, the same. Okay, so now we add these two equations together. Now you see negative 10, add 10, that's gone, right? And 14 minus 5, that's 9i2. And this, you add them together, is negative 180 volts. So you divide by 9 by both sides. i2 gives you negative 20 volts. Okay? And then now you have i2. You can plug i2 in here and find out i1. You can plug in any of those, but this, this is a little simpler, right? Because of the 10 in, in front of i1. So 5 times negative 20 uh, equals negative 160 volts. This is negative 100, so this becomes positive 100, right? This becomes positive 100 minus, minus 100 on both sides, so it's negative 460 volts equals 10 I1, right? So I1 is negative 46 volts, okay? So we got I1, we got I2. Uh, in that case, we are going to plug it into here, and then we're going to plug I1 into here. Right, so I1 minus I2, uh, negative 46 volts minus negative 20 volts. Negative and negative becomes a positive. Uh, so f negative 46 plus 20, that's going to become negative 26 volts. And that is our um, answer for I0. Okay, fantastic. All right, so hopefully uh, you, you're able to draw the, like learn from this equation, uh, this problem is that if you have X amount of unknowns, you should have X amount of equations to be able to solve the problem, right? So right here we have four, but from the mesh analysis, we can only draw two. That means, okay, we need more. And how do we get more? We probably most likely is going to use Christoph Kern law at a nod, right? Which is given over here, draw, uh, draw their conclusions, and then you plug in back in and use some relations and whatnot to find out the final answer. Okay, all right, uh, hopefully this 
was helpful. Uh, good luck on your studies, and I'll see you in my future videos. Bye.